Allen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As y'all can see, uh, I'm, well, the group you're, that you're talking to now are very new <laughs> on this uh, committee, and I want to thank all of you uh, for sharing. I've been on Agriculture and educa Education and uh, Workforce Committee, and I'm uh, tickled to death to serve on this committee, but I will tell you today uh, I am devastated by what I'm hearing, and I wish every American uh, could hear this. Um, uh, Sheriff, uh, I believe in law and order. In fact, my parents instilled in me Romans 13, that God establishes all authority. And he gives that authority, he's given you that authority to use the uh, sword to deal with evil. Um, they also taught that the scriptures tell us, particularly our children, to guard their hearts and minds. I wish they'd have drilled a little bit of that, more of that into me, because I have, uh, as a teenager and in college, probably needed to protect that a little more, and, uh, and, and I confess that. But, uh, uh, it, you know, and as a member of Congress, we take an oath to... Uh, to uh, support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And it's obvious here to me today, and I don't know why the American people don't know this, but we are at war and we don't even know it. I mean, how can you kill this many people and get away with it? Uh, it's obvious that the Attorney General and the uh, administration has no plan to deal with it. Uh, and you say, well, what can Congress do? This Congress has the power to declare war. Why aren't the American people, this country will always be a grassroots country, why are not the American people screaming over the phones to these congressional offices to declare war on these cartels as a terrorist organization. And let's send our military down there to deal with it as a first step and a signal to the rest of the world, you're not going to do this to this country. Now, that's a little extreme, but how else are we going to solve this problem? And I'd, I'd like to get your feedback on it. Sheriff, I'll start with you. Well, sir, I don't think that that's an extreme idea. Um, I believe that this fentanyl crisis um, manufactured in China is, um, you know, to use maybe a militaristic term or maybe a law enforcement term, it's functioning as designed. It is completely and entirely intentional that this crisis is being brought into this country. And we should be willing to do all things necessary to stop it. Now, that doesn't mean just enforcement. Yes, we do need to address these cartels. We do need to quash them. Well, we also need to provide treatment to the people in our country who are suffering from it. Well, obviously, we're live streaming this. I would hope this, would, this, this hearing today would go viral and the American people would wake up and understand exactly what we're dealing with. Dealing with Miss Neville, you yeah. look like you. Well, I, one comment. of the things that we're really up against, as far as the general public is concerned, is we're a heavily stigmatized society. You know, I inevitably somebody will probably email me after this and tell me that I'm a horrible parent and it's my kid's fault for putting the pill in his mouth in the first place. It happens all the time. You know, there we tend to blame the user in these cases, but when we're talking about people who thought they were taking a single oxy and die from it, that's not, you know, they were deceptively sold something. You know, if you came to my house and I made a cake that had poison in it, did you die of a cake overdose or did Ms. you Neville, die? Neville, your child was murdered. Absolutely, absolutely. But we need to start changing the public perception of the folks that are using drugs. I've heard it from people when I try to talk to them about these issues. Oh, well, my child would never do that. Okay, mine did. What's your perception of a child that does this? Let's, let's really talk about this here. So until we can change those perceptions, we are going to be stuck in this mess. Ms. Goldberg, I have 21 seconds, but we're looking at criminal activity here by social media companies. Now, is section, I know Section 230, I don't think it covers criminal, but why can't we use the criminal law to deal with these people who perpetrate this stuff? 
why can't we use criminal law to deal with the tech companies? Because you're right, there is no immunity when it comes to criminal laws against social media companies. Our law enforcers never actually go after them, though. Um, and, you know, the cartel that, that I think we really need, need to be focusing on are the social media companies, which are aiding and abetting the, the delivery uh, and the matching of, of users to sellers. Well, my heart goes out to you. Grassroots America, let's get with it and let's make, let's stop this nonsense. Thank you so much. I yield back.